Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and GHS class of 2020. My name is Mindy Ritchie, and I'm an assistant principal at GHS. On behalf of Community Unit School District 205's Board of Education, administration, faculty, and staff, I would like to welcome you to this commencement ceremony honoring the 157th graduating class, the class of 2020. At this time, I would like to recognize our board members. Board President, Tiana Cervantes. Board Vice President, Rod Sherpy. Board Secretary, Maury Lyon. Board Member, Wendell Hunnigan. Board Member, Rodney Phelps. Board Member, Courtney Rodriguez. And Board Member, Nicholas Walters. I'd also like to recognize our high school administration. Mr. Jeff Houston, GHS Principal. Mr. Jason Spring, GHS North Principal. Mr. Daniel Powell, GHS Assistant Principal. And myself, Mrs. R Mindy Ritchie, another GHS Assistant Principal. Our district administration includes Dr. John Aspland, District 205 Superintendent of Schools. Mrs. Jennifer Bloyd Ham, Assistant Superintendent for Finance and Operations. Mrs. Tiffany Springer, Director for Curriculum and Instruction, and Dr. Don Mashad, Director of Special Education. We know that you will enjoy this special occasion with us today, and so to begin, I would like to introduce our first speaker, Kaylee Williams, who will be speaking to us about the past. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time of day you're watching this, I am so glad you have decided to take part in this celebration of the Gelsberg High School Class of 2020. I am very excited and honored to be on your computer screen today. Let me start by saying, ever since 2008 when High School Musical 3 came out, I have dreamed of the day where I'd stand at the podium addressing my class just like Troy Bolton did. However, I never thought it'd be so hard to say my farewells to this school. I mean, come on, these years have caused some of the most stressful moments of our lives. Late nights, early mornings, one assignment after another, long lectures, crowded hallways, and so much more. Why do I have such a hard time saying goodbye to these things? After a lot of thought, I've come to realize that no matter how many bad times we encountered over the years, the good moments are the ones that shine through. Crowded sports games, huge student sections, amazing concerts, incredible musicals, inspiring teachers, and beautiful friendships are the things that I will truly remember about the days of walking the halls at GHS. I want to reflect on the past 13 years as a whole. I'm talking about the days of Snuggies, Silly Vans, and Vine, all the way to the days of the Mannequin Challenge, trying to figure out if the dress is gold and white or black and blue, fidget spinners, the woe, and now TikTok. We all started as little elementary school kids. We were proud to be a Gale Cougar, Silas Wildcat, King Tiger, Nielsen Navigator, Steel Superstar, or Costa Fryer. Then we combined into two junior highs. Some sported green and yellow as a Lombard Zephyr. Others wore the superior blue and white as a Churchill blue streak. In the end, we all came together as Gelsberg High School Silver Streaks. We grew up in this odd generation where we spent most of our childhood playing outside until it was time for dinner. For the first half of our schooling years, we wrote essays by hand, and we weren't able to reference a Chromebook for answers. We would walk single file to the computer lab to play for an hour on Study Island or Cool Math for Kids. In junior high, we were given a Chromebook that we carried around in a bulky case and barely used. We had black and yellow gym uniforms with our names sewn in, and we walked the what seemed like huge halls of our middle schools. Then the days full of memories started. We walked into this huge and intimidating place called high school. I can't help but remember the first day of freshman year, the day while I fell going up the main staircase in front of all the big, tall, scary upperclassmen. Little did I know, I would soon be a mighty senior and do the exact same thing all over again towards the end of my high school career. Let's talk about bringing things full circle. We grew from scared freshmen to scary upperclassmen. In the blink of an eye, we became the ones who were driving our own cars to school, starting on the varsity team, being the lead in a school play, organizing meetings as club officers, and directing the band. Without realizing how fast time was passing, we went from a small kindergartner learning how to write our names, dreaming of the day we'd walk across the stage and get our diplomas, to seniors learning how to live in the real world, 
dreaming of going back to the days that included scheduled nap and play times. I don't know about you guys, but I would much rather be spending my days trading silly bands and playing diehard kickball at recess than taking finals and only getting parties at the end of the term. I just want to know who decided that fifth grade would be the cutoff for bringing treats on your birthday. As we come to the end of our childhood schooling, I want to challenge each of you to do one thing. Say thank you. Say thank you to the Galesburg staff members who helped you become who you are today. Say thank you to your mentors who guided you along the right track. Say thank you to your friends who have helped you along the way. And most importantly, say thank you to your family, the people who always had your best interests at heart. You might even want to sneak in a thank you to Google and caffeine while you're at it. We both know those are the things that helped us immensely when it came to understanding a topic or cranking out your essay the night before it was due. I want to say thank you to all of you, the Gelsberg High School Class of 2020. Thank you for always laughing at my dad jokes and for supporting me through my hardest moments. Thank you to my teachers for encouraging me to be a better version of myself. Thank you to the GHS administration for always having our backs and for ensuring that the seniors were honored this year. Thank you to my closest friends for always making me smile, even when I didn't want to. Thank you to my cousin Rachel for always reminding me that while an assignment may have a deadline, a time for laughter and happiness can always be squeezed in. To my brother Jacob, thank you for always helping me with applications and homework. To my sister Mackenzie, thank you for being my personal therapist and hairstylist. Thank you to my parents for pushing me to be my absolute best and for helping me believe that the future holds so much more than what I can see. I would not be who I am today without each and every one of you. The past 13 years are coming to an end in a very odd way, but no matter the circumstances, it can't take away from what we've experienced during the years. When I look at each of the students in this graduating class, the first word that comes to mind is growth. We have all grown as so much as individuals, whether it be academically, as a teammate, as an artist, as a singer, or as a band member, we have grown into better people. I can honestly say that I am so proud to be a member of this graduating class. We are the ones that will go down history books as the students that persevered and stayed strong through all the trials thrown our way. Through the past four years, we have spent approximately 4,750 hours going from one class to the next. But I want to remind all of you, the past is the past. You are not defined by what you did in high school. You have the ability to change and become the best version of yourself that you can be. No matter what path you take, each of you have such a bright future. Winnie the Pooh once said, how lucky am I to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard. I will forever cherish some memories from GHS, but now it is time for the class of 2020 to start making our mark on the world. I ask you to please never forget one thing. Once a silver streak, always a silver streak. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce our second student speaker, Tyler Steck, who will be speaking to you about the present. Fellow graduates of the class of 2020, friends and family, I would like to start my speech with a quote from Bill King, which reads, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. But if today truly is a gift, right now it is wrapped in really ugly paper. Although no matter how poorly a gift is wrapped, it's what's inside that matters. With that in mind, we should all make it a point to look past the ugly appearance of today and look for all the positives wrapped within. When I chose to speak about the present, I wasn't sure exactly what I would say or how it would go. I knew from the start I didn't want to spend the entire time talking about the coronavirus because it does no good to constantly think about or complain about things that we have no control over. However, the virus is a huge part of our present. It has caused many losses for us as a class. It has taken away so many things that we cared about or dreamed about, and it has kept us from living out any of our dreams senior year. We have all lost something dear to us as this school year has come to an end. For me and seven other seniors who worked their tails off all year, we lost our senior baseball season which we have been planning and preparing for since sixth grade. Under normal circumstances, the baseball team and I would be celebrating our second regional championship today, June 1st, and we would be beginning to prepare to go to sectionals and continue what last year's team started for us, 
ending this year with a state championship. But it's not only baseball players or athletes in general who are missing out on things they care about. It's every senior in our school and in every school across the country. Despite all of this, though, the things we have lost are not the greatest concern. Sure, losing a prom or a traditional graduation ceremony or a season or anything else you care about is heartbreaking right now and has led to a lot of confusion because no one understands what is going on or why we can't have everything that any other senior class has ever received. Our biggest challenge, though, stems from that confusion that the virus has caused us all. Amid all of the worrying, the questioning, and the sadness over what we have already lost and what we could lose in the months to come, we have all lost sight of the present. To say that this time of year is difficult for a high school senior as we attempt to transition from a life that we know and are comfortable with to a whole new chapter of our life, one that we have never explored before and know almost nothing about, is a terrible understatement. Every one of us will be starting a new life within the next few months, whether it's attending a different school, pursuing a new vocation, entering the military, or for some of us, moving to a completely new city far from home. This time of year is hard for any class, but it is also an exciting time for many of the same reasons as it is scary. We have all worked hard throughout high school to prepare ourselves for the next step in our lives, which is now in the very near future. Some of us have plans to move on to play sports, some plan to continue to sing, to dance, or to play an instrument, and some plan to continue to volunteer and be leaders in their communities. Others are thinking about where in the world they might study or how they will change the world in the future. So it is our biggest challenge right now to not lose sight of whatever dreams you may have. It does none of us any good to spend our time thinking about how terrible the coronavirus is or dwelling on the things that we have already lost, because those things are far out of our control. The only thing that we can truly control is ourselves and our own present. The past is said and done, and the future is yet to come. So if we spend all of our time thinking about either of those two things, we will lose sight of where we are now. This time at home has given many of us the opportunity to do activities that we normally would not have the time to do, or the opportunity to spend time with family that would normally be spent elsewhere. And maybe that's a blessing in disguise for all of us as we prepare to leave our homes and our families. For my family, this is normally the most hectic time of year, where we might pass each other in the morning as we get ready for the day, and then one more time as we're all getting ready to go to bed. Since the lockdown started, though, we have had time to play basketball in the driveway, sit around on our porch and talk, and have even started watching TV shows as a family, something that we'd never have time to do before this year. In this time of crisis, in the middle of an unprecedented world event, it is important that we all stay positive and work on controlling our present. Make the best of this extra time with the people around you, because in just a couple short months, we will all be surrounded by a whole new crowd of people. Write down some of your memories from this time or your feelings about the things going on, because this type of global pandemic may never happen again in history. One quote that I heard recently as I was preparing this speech was, the present is the one thing that doesn't change in changing times, meaning that no matter how crazy the world around us gets, we always have control over ourselves in the present moment. And as long as we remain focused on who we are now and what we're doing today, we can all work through anything that the world throws in our path to greatness. As of right now, we, the class of 2020, are the most special and most memorable class to ever graduate from Galesburg High School not only because of what we've had to endure during the last couple months of this year, but because we have all made it through every challenge we have faced and are still on a trajectory to do great things and change the world one day. Congratulations to all of you. I couldn't have picked a better group of people to graduate with. Thank you. Our last student speaker this afternoon is Haley Benowitz, who will be speaking about the future. The lives we have all lived up until this point have undoubtedly been less than perfect, filled with ups and downs, good and bad moments, and everything in between. The past, however, does not define us, as we are in control of where our lives go from this point on. The present is a time where we are stuck in a seemingly never-ending loop of uncertainty, now more than ever. I want to emphasize that nothing I say, or any of us say, can change the situation that we are in. 
I cannot bring back opportunities lost, erase damage done, or console you into thinking this is all okay, or how it was supposed to be. The future, it seems, has always felt like something so far away, almost as if it would never come. Many of us grew up dreaming about walking across the stage to receive our diploma, or perhaps just being done with high school altogether. That was then, and this is now. The thing about the future is that it isn't dictated by your past. Your previous actions, opportunities, and experiences have led up to this point, yes, but now you control where you want to move from here. The hard work, dedication, late nights, early mornings, and all four years of high school have not been in vain. Now we must move on from the safety of these walls, which four years ago were completely foreign, but now we find comfort in thinking back on them. Each place we go from here will be the same. Each of us will have another first day, whether that be at a small college or large university, the military, the workforce, or the beginning of a gap year. Those feelings we had as freshmen, the nerves and excitement about what was to come, will find us again at one point or another. I hope that each of you relishes in those feelings, because we know one day the anxiety will soon fade into normalcy and there lies the opportunity to take it for granted. When each of you looks back on your high school experience, I hope you can say you did not take a single moment for granted, living each second to the fullest. However, we know this is not the case for most of us. High school brought us memories we will never forget, friendships that will last a lifetime, and so many opportunities that have shaped us into who we are today. And although you may have taken these for granted while you were here, do not let them consume you, for the future lies outside of these walls, not within them. I too will miss the excitement in the halls on conference game day, the buzz before a performance, the relief after finishing a big test or final, and seeing so many people I know every day. I too think of the spring sports seasons we will never have, the spring musical we will never see, the chance to walk the halls one final time, never to be found, and the final goodbyes we may never get. We may never have the opportunity to thank those who helped us reach this point in person, so on each of our behalfs. Thank you to each of our teachers, from the ones who taught us our ABCs to the ones who taught us college level math. From those who helped us learn how to read to those who helped us write admissions essays. To the teachers who stayed before and after school, to the staff that always greeted us with a smile or handshake, to those who cheered us on from the bleachers and audience, and to those who made us into who we are today. Thank you. Thank you to our family and friends who took time out of their lives to help us along this journey. To our friends that never left our side, stayed up studying with us, did crazy things with us, and reached graduation day side by side. Thank you. To our families that poured unconditional support onto us, made meals for us, told us that you were proud. Thank you. We hope that each of you watching this is proud of us. For, the four, for these four years, we're not easy. The next four won't be either. The special thing about the class of 2020 is not that we are graduating in the middle of a pandemic. It is not that we were born in a time of tension and unrest. It is not that we are the first class since 1919, graduating in a year where the first two digits match the last two digits or that we are the last seniors to walk the halls of this building before it is remodeled. What is so special about us is our determination to succeed, our willingness to work for it, and now the bright futures that lie ahead for each and every one of us. Our resilience has proved to be our greatest characteristic, not only this year, but every year prior. I know that each of you have worked extremely hard to be where you are today, and I hope you are truly proud of all you have accomplished. Our futures lie ahead of us, ready and waiting for us to take the first step. Although it will be intimidating, although it will not be easy, we have proved over and over again that we are not afraid of a challenge and we can do anything we put our minds to. The future is a scary place, but so was high school not too long ago. My wish for each of you is that you look back on these four years with a smile on your face not regrets for what could have been or never was. I wish that each of you goes into your future with a head held high, for you have done so much to get to this moment. 
Fellow graduates, our futures wait for us. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Be courageous, have faith, and know that you are capable of anything. For you have shown how determined you are many times before. Here is the point in time where we go in different directions, none of us going down an identical path. But we will always have these four years to link us together. For even though we will all go our separate ways, we will always remain together as the class of 2020. Thank you. I would like to now introduce our faculty speaker this year, Ms. Tamara Qualls. The class of 2020. I have thought more than once that if I were in a graduating class, I would want to be in the class of 2020. I mean, there are just so many catchy phrases we see clearly in 2020. Catch the vision, 2020. Looking ahead to the class of 2020. Vision of the future, 2020. However, the class of 2020 has not been the hope that we thought it would have for you. Instead, it has been filled with uncertainty, the unknown, and the constant response of wait and see. These responses have then created disappointment, hurt, heartbreak, fear, and distance. I've experienced it with you as a teacher, with you as a parent of a 2020 high school graduate and a 2020 college graduate. I cannot recreate all of the memories that are lost, but I can tell you that this too shall pass and you will be the stronger for it. What I said to my college daughter who was bitter at losing memories with friends who will never be together in the same place again is that others gave up high school diplomas, college scholarships, major league careers, family and friends for more than a year to go off and fight in a war for our country. They had no guarantees to come back healthy or alive. They were not retreating to their homes for safety. Instead, they had their lives interrupted and put on the firing line for us, for the USA. Other children and young adults in third world countries will never even receive an education, let alone walk across a stage to get a diploma. I know, I know. We can always find those who are better or worse off, but that does not heal our shattered dreams. I get it. Plus, I'm not one to play the comparison game, all but it does put things into perspective. See, your terrible job is the dream of the unemployed. Your house is the dream of the homeless. Your smile is the dream of the depressed. Your health is the dream of those who are ill. So don't let difficult times make you forget your blessings. But really, what I want to talk to you about are two things that you have experienced throughout this time. Both are emotions, not always logical, but still present and very real. Disappointment is the first one. All of us, parents, teachers, administrators, have hoped to shelter you from the disappointments in life. Why? Because we don't want you to realize that hardships occur, even to good people, or that life really is not fair, or that, shh, don't tell, but the Easter Bunny or the Tooth Fairy just might not hop by your house or fly into your room at night. I'm not even talking about Santa or wishing on stars or other things filled with wonder, because the truth is that bad things are going to happen and you will be disappointed, frustrated, and treated unfairly. This is a guarantee in life. So, what should you do? Well, you get up and you make the best of it. You learn from the problems and you carve out of the disappointment a trophy of victory that makes you a winner anyway. How do you do this? By not feeling sorry for yourself. All this does is make you listless and entitled while keeping you stuck in the mud. 
by asking what you can learn from this. What advantage is this crazy disappointment giving you to better prepare you for success? Extra time to apply for scholarships, extra time to get in shape, extra time to study for AP tests, extra time to work and save money for college, extra time to sing or practice your instrument of choice, extra time to learn something new, extra time for you to become the do-it-yourself project, the new improved you. Life is hard and you're getting a preliminary taste of how to succeed anyway. Music artist Toby Mac says, don't forget, you can start late, start over, be unsure, act different, try and fail, and still succeed. High five. So it doesn't matter where you have been or what happened in the past, you can still succeed. It does not matter where you come from or who does not believe in you, you can still succeed. It does not matter whether you didn't end your school year the way you wanted or you have a graduation filled with people in an auditorium, you can still succeed. This is a theme that anyone who has known or has been knocked down and known disappointment has seen and experienced. Mother Teresa said it this way in her poem entitled, Anyway. People are often unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some false friends and some true enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest and frank, people may cheat you. Be honest and frank anyway. What you spend years building, someone could destroy just overnight. Build anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, they may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today, people will often forget tomorrow. Do good anyway. Give the world the best you have, and it may never be enough. Give the world the best you've got anyway. You see, in the final analysis, it is between you and your God. It was never between you and them anyway. So your senior year did not turn out the way you wanted. Find the good in it anyway. You've learned that life is hard. You are already ahead of any other class in knowing this because of COVID-19. I always knew you were overachievers and quick learners. However, there's one emotion that can stop you from achieving. I've often asked students or people the question, if you had to name the most common emotion in our world, what would it be? Would it be love, hate, disappointment, jealousy, joy, fear? Personally, I think it's fear. It is what stops us in our tracks. It causes us to not go to school or to not hug people or to not leave our houses or to not fear is something that's overtaken our societies, our homes, and our lives. Fear that something could happen to us or to our loved ones. You've dealt with fear and our society is currently de dealing with fear. Now, I'm not saying that COVID-19 is not real or something to be feared. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that you are educated, intelligent people. Use your common sense. Research and find out what you believe. Don't just let someone else tell you what to believe. Don't let the media, the politicians, your teachers, or even me tell you what to believe. You need to figure this out yourself. The acronym for fear is false evidence appearing real. You need to research and find out what is real and what is true. Fear is an illusion. The great philosopher Seneca said, we are more often frightened than hurt, and we suffer more from imagination than from reality. Douglas Horton says that uh, action cures fear, inaction creates terror. It paralyzes us. Fear does not stop death, it stops life. This is the time that we are living in. But fear is also something that every class that has graduated has dealt with, because every human being has experienced it. Fear of the future, the unknown, failure, hurt. I do not want you, class of 2020, to live like this. Choose a better vision, a perfect 2020 vision. Go after your dreams. Make yourself get up and do the unimaginable. Quit worrying about what others 
think or will say. Even if you make a mistake or you fall down, you learn from it. Doing nothing because of fear will get you nowhere with no lessons learned. Rudyard Kipling, author of The Jungle Book, The Story of Mowgli, says, of all the liars in the world, sometimes the worst are our own fears. Edmund Burke, philosopher and politician, said, no power so effectively robs the mind of all its powers of acting and reasoning as fear. Fear does not stop death, it stops life. Philosopher Marcus Aurelius said, it's not death that a man should fear, but he should fear never beginning to live. Dale Carnegie, motivational speaker and author, says, fear doesn't exist anywhere except in your mind. You've heard many quotes about fear. Why so many? Because everyone deals with fear. No one is exempt. I'm challenging you, the class of 2020, to embrace your fears, to wrestle them down to the mat, defeat them once and for all. If you want to achieve something, you have an inkling, a wisp of a dream, a passion that brings you joy and fulfillment, then you go after it. Work hard, study hard, and you can do anything. We are still builders and shapers of the American dream. You are ready to strap on some courage and conquer the world. You are no longer children, so stop checking for monsters under the bed and realize that most of the monsters are within us. Deal with those. When you're knocked down, stand up. Brush yourself off and keep going. Often our kids' responses mimic the parents' responses. When my children were little and they'd fall down, I would not respond. I'd just keep going and act like it was no big deal. And guess what? My kids did the same. They hopped up and they kept on running. Now, if I stopped and acted like this had been the worst thing ever, rushing to their sides, crying, screaming in fear, are you okay? What happened? Are you all right? Let me see. They had the same response. It's called fear. You get to choose how you will respond. Now, I want to leave you with one last quote by Maya Angelou. You may not control all the events that happen to you, but you can decide not to be reduced by them. That is what I want to challenge you to do, to choose your actions, not just react. Stand tall and rise again. You still have amazing memories, friends, family, teachers, and an education that will take you places you want to go. You have a future filled with hope. You are more than conquerors. You are overcomers, and you've got this. Go out, and without fear or disappointment, embrace a future filled with joy, success, and hope. Class of 2020, you are visionaries who will carve a new future for us. And in your vision, I bet you know what I'm gonna say. I love you, and you are very special. Now go and continue to be amazing. Thank you. I would now like to introduce our school board president, Ms. Tiana Cervantes. Good afternoon to everyone celebrating the class of 2020. I wanna start by saying thank you to some important people. To our custodians, cafeteria workers, paraprofessionals, building secretaries and administrative assistants, nurses, outreach workers, deans, principals, and district administration, thank you. Without your work, day in and day out, our buildings do not open and operate smoothly. Our students are not cared for and kept safe, and our teachers are not able to focus on the work of educating our students. To our teachers, thank you for your hard work every day of the school year, but in particular, these past few months. Moving a classroom online, maintaining meaningful contact with your students, and still managing to impart an educational experience was no small task at all. Thanks to your dedication and care, many students are able to look forward to this next fall with excitement, particularly the class of 2020. Next, I'd like to address the loved ones of the class of 2020. I sat where you are just three short years ago in utter awe that my son was already graduating from high school. I couldn't believe that the past 18 years had gone by so fast. I wasn't ready to let go but I knew that he was ready for his next journey. 
I knew that the love and lessons provided to him by me, our family, friends, teachers and coaches had prepared him for wherever life would take him. So take a deep breath, exhale, and take comfort in knowing that you too have done everything that you could to prepare your student for what comes next. And now to the guests of honor, to the class of 2020. Believe it or not, I was sitting in your seat 25 years ago. Our situations are definitely not the same. I had to adjust to a digital world. You were born into one. I had to wait for camera film to be processed when I took pictures with friends. You're able to edit your pictures, add filters, and share them instantly with your friends. Passing notes in between classes was a careful art, and we did, we did our best to not get caught by the teacher. Your version of passing notes is Snapchat. Yes, our experiences are not the same, but I imagine that some of our thoughts and feelings may be. I wondered if I would keep in touch with my friends after leaving high school. I did. I wondered if I had picked the right college to attend. Mm, I didn't the first time around. I wondered what big city I would move to and live in. Well, I wondered if my family was proud of me, and they were. And I wondered how long the ceremony would take so they could get out of the hot cap and gown. You've got me beat there. Admittedly, my world then looked different than yours does now. There is a lot of uncertainty for what the future holds and how it may look as we make our way through these challenging times. My hope is that what you, you take what you have learned here, both academically and personally, and that you continue to learn and grow. Step out of your comfort zone, challenge yourself, and critically think about the world around you and your role in it. Be kind, show compassion, call home. I've got your back, parents. But in the meantime, and in the immediate future, I hope that you take the opportunity to appreciate how far you have come already, how hard you have worked to get to this day. Appreciate the loved ones that surround you. Take advantage of the small moments to create new memories, because if we have learned anything over the past few months, nothing is guaranteed. Class of 2020, congratulations on your graduation. Best of luck to you as you continue your journey, and don't be a stranger. Come back to visit. This will always be your home. Members of the Board of Education, Dr. Asplin, on behalf of the faculty of Gelsberg High School, I certify that these students have met both the mandates of the state of Illinois and the policies of the Board of Education. I present to you the class of 2020. Thank you, Mr. Houston. It is my pleasure and honor on behalf of the Galesburg Community Unit School District number 205, Board of Education, to proudly accept the graduates of the class of 2020. I do hereby proclaim each of you graduates of Galesburg High School. Congratulations and good luck. We have come together to honor the graduating class of 2020. High school commencement is a ceremony that recognizes academic achievement and entrance to the world of advanced education, work, or service. The students appearing on stage today by virtue of their academic accomplishments have earned the right to be ceremoniously recognized. Haley Benowitz. Zachary Carlson. Abigail Cermak. Benjamin Cermak.
Natalia Chima. Emma Koval. Nora Leahy. Dylan Legate. Ada Mel. Christopher Pamatmat. Tegan Wren. Tyler Steck. Kaylee Williams. Janice Abel. Emma Hawkinson. Mateo. Bailey, Tyler Ferris, <laughs> Hannah Flaherty, <laughs> Mason Martinez. Paige McCleary. <laughs> Giarmondo Parker. Alexandria Roden. Gabrielle Walters. Jasmine Zavala. Ayanla Adam. Chase Allen. <laughs> Destiny Allen. <laughs> Matthew Alvier. Madeline Anderson. Colin Angelo. You can go ahead and take that right there. Mm hmm. Connor Ayton. <laughs> Catherine Atwell. <laughs> Braden Bagwell.
Emily Bailey. Shelby Bailey. Caitlin Bainter. Chase Baldwin. Nicholas Bastian. Cheyenne Belleville. Heidi Benbow. Mercedes Benson. Anthony Blakes, Jr. Madison Bloomgren. Emily Blucker. Abby Bogan. Josephine Boynton. Caroline Briggs. Arlita Brown. Emily Brewington. Veronica Buddy. Faith Burton. Hannah Kane. Emily Camarena. Madeline Carlson. Maxwell Carr. Jessica Carver. Presley Cash. Chase Castile. Miguel Seha. Bryson Chastine. Talis Clayton. Jackson Colclasure.
Destiny Coleman. Krista Cooley. Trevor Hoyle. Emma Lee Kozad. Samantha Kozad. Kaylee Custer. Will Seipert. Kennedy Davis. Zion Davis. Nicholas Deco. Hayden Decker. Nicholas Delajanis. Dakota Drowns. Cora Duffy. Livia Dunbar. Heaven Edwards. Braden Embry. Alexius Empson. Dakota Erickson. Caleb Fall. Allison Feely. Andres Felix Lopez. Alexis Fleming. Dimage Flunder. Bradley Folger. Grant Foster. Tyler Fox. Noel Fuller. Madeline Gabbert. Lucas Garcia. Patricia Garrett.
Justice Gatson. Haley Glasnovich. Maya Gomez. Natasha Gossage. Xander Gray. Wesley Gregg. Austin Hall. Taryn Hall. Nathan Haluska. Amy Hardy. Megan Harms. Ty Harder. Victoria Hawkins. Jillian Helms. Keontae Henry. Addison Hensley. Hunter Herschelman. Catherine Herslow. You can take that and take your picture. Mary Hicks. Bryce Hoffman. Richard Hogan. Logan Holland. Next. Diamond Hunter. And when I say your name, Alyssa Hyatt. Justin Idol. Birth Elu. Nicholas Innes. Zachary Innes. Antoine Jackson. Kyle Jackson. Noah Jacobs. Avante Johnson.
Kane Johnson. Kaden Johnson. Logan Johnson. Jaylee Jones. Samantha Joseph. Mason Kennedy. Emmy Kirsch. Travis Kazire. Madison Knuth. Minuet Lam. Carly Larson. Hannah Larson. Haley Larson. Haley Lawson. Christina Lee. Travion Lee. Kelton Locke. Tanner Lowe. Jasper Majeski. Hunter Magstead. Zachary Malcolm. Noah Matheny. Dejanay Matthews. Catherine Morizi. Dylan McBride. Jalen McCants. John McCulloch. Darius McGill. Blake McKee. Trevor McLaren. Caitlin McLean. Abby Mendez. Teresa M. Futila.
Riley Mylan. Kaylee Miller. Trevor Miller. Riley Milroy. Roly Molenga. Ivante Moore. Lorenzo Moreno. Shaylin Morrison. Chase Motes. Isaiah Mowen. Gabrielle Mullen. Bria Mygett. James Nelson. Kalia Nelson. Brandy Newburn. Peter and Goma. Cameron Nicholson. Caleb Nicholas. Benedict Nyangasa. David Olivas. Diego Olivas. Dylan Olson. Grace Palmer. Akasha Patterson. John Petmeyer Jr. Lydia Perez. Blaze Purchase. Isabella Qualls. Isaiah Ramirez. Michael Ramos. Michael, you can go ahead and grab that. Yeah. Everett Reed Jr. Eric Rice.
Tyler Richardson. Bethany Ricketts. Brandon Riley. Grant Robinson. Pedro Romero. Macy Rosenberry. Caleb Ross. Waylon Roth. Harrison Rutledge. Mitchell Sampson. Callie Sandoval. Madison Shower. Riley Schlisch. Chloe Shainer. Jared Ship. Gareth Schull. Isabel Silver. Chloe Smith. Jason Smith. Joshua Smith. Caitlin Smith. Tamara Snedden. Jacob Spillman. Annika Spring. Emma St. George. Chelsea Stevenson. Emily Stevenson. Adam Stewart. Johnny Stipp. Owen Stomberg. Michael Stormer. Hunter Two. Alyssa Thomas. Carter Thompson. Ty Thurman. Riley Tuthill. Scott Barner. 
David Feinerman. Anastasia Wade. Brian Walker. Taylor Warden. Congratulations, Taylor. Soraya Williams. Thomas Williams. Nicholas Winters. Elijah Woods. Jerry Woods. Faith Worthington. Emma Wright. Scott Zesh. Mr. Houston, that completes the reading of the roll. Members of the class of 2020, you may now move your tassels from the right to the left. Please join us in recognizing the class of 2020. <laughs> 